Hi everyone, Scott Schneider on Stereo Niche. Hey, this week it's a receiver from Technix, the SA800. Come right back. So let's talk about this particular series from Technix. So this is the X00 series. So it started with the SA200 at 25 watts and went all the way up to the biggest, most powerful receiver ever made, the SA1000 at a whopping 330 watts. So this particular series was made in 78 and 79, right at the end of the 1970s. And had a you know similar design aesthetic to the prior lines, but this was the very peak of the Watt Wars, if you will. The, the SA-1000 uh, retailed for $1,700. Quite a, quite a lot of money back then. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure you could probably buy a low-end car for around $2,100. So uh, that was a significant amount. Of course, it was the most powerful receiver ever made. So you know, I guess some folks were willing to fork out the, a, almost a car's worth of money, which is why they're pretty rare. Uh, they're, they're tough to find. Um, you don't find a SA-1000 very often, probably one of the most rare of the monster receivers. So this one is the SA-800. It actually is the model just before the 1000, but it dropped all the way in power down to 125 watts. So significant reduction, but also a significant reduction in price. So these retail, I think, for 800 around that price range. Um, quite, a lot, quite a lot lower than, you know, the SA-1000, of course. Now, they had some cool features. The, the, the front, they look very Technics, you know, to me. You can, you can distinguish a Technics receiver pretty quickly, um, especially on this series. They were, you know, one of the first to start incorporating these LEDs, as this, in this case, the power meters. Um, kind of had this very, very clean sort of, you know, functional look, but uh, wasn't, I don't think, um, you know, overly done and uh, just sort of business-like, you know, to me. Um, a lot of the, the upper end models like this one, lots of features. Um, one of the cool things in the circuitry that it does have is an impedance matching circuit. So when you're hooking up your speakers, whether they be four ohm or eight ohm, it'll automatically detect the, the impedance and then match on, uh, appropriately on the transformer side. So um, you know, pretty sophisticated technology that was built into these. Um, another cool feature uh, that the circuitry has is a sort of um, pop feature. Uh, I think that's what they called it in the brochure. But it's that occasional time where you've, if you've ever had, you know, a receiver and you turn it on and your speakers make a pop and that initial, you know, inrush there. Um, this has a circuitry to prevent that. So. You know, nice, nice feature to have, and there's built-in little tweaks that they put in. Um, you know, make a difference. Lots of other features, which I'll go through uh, in the last segment. But the one thing that uh, I wanted to comment on about—that's what I've found very common with these, uh, this series—and uh, that's on the maintenance side of things. They, uh, for one, to get to the pots, not an easy thing to do at all. You have to take off the entire front uh, plate and uh, go in behind it and it's pretty tedious to do and uh, you need to be a bit meticulous in making sure that you don't you know misplace any screws you need to do it very methodically um, and get in there and very much clean all the pots now i say very much because i clean these uh, pretty thoroughly um, about a year ago and they're already you know have oxidation or scratchy again so i have to go in and do it again but I, found, I just find the Technics um, pots to be just much more problematic than other receivers, uh, other manufacturers. Not sure why, but I can tell you that every Technics I've ever had, it, it was quite significant in the oxidation and the, le the level of effort to go in there and get them clean again. And it was, um, you know, it doesn't seem to stay that way for very long. Um, one thing in particular uh, as well, it's, it's for all manufacturers, but very in particular, particular on the Technics is the uh, tape monitor switch. Uh, the tape monitor switches um, get a lot of oxidation and, and 
the signal does not pass through. In fact, I've had some where it was so bad, I, th I thought that uh, the, the receiver was dead. I couldn't get anything. And um, lo and behold, after enough cleaning, it, it started coming through. And it's the monitor switch uh, in, the, in those cases. And that's happened more than once. So I would say spend a little extra time, you know, on that particular switch. But, um, you know, a lot of following for Technics, they, they, uh, when, they're, you know, when they're all cleaned up and working well, they're very, very nice receivers. Um, I've, I just don't run across them. I, I have not run across them all that often. I think this is about the fourth unit that I've had. It's the largest um, of this particular series. I've had uh, a, 70, uh, a, a 700, a 600, and a 500. And uh, this being the largest is the one I've kept um, out of all those. Now, it also is in pretty good shape. The other ones, um, although the 600 was in nice shape, the other ones had a little bit of um, cosmetic issues, so I ended up passing them on. Um, but again, a lot of following for Technics, and um, so I wanted to, to start off and showcase that one to you today. So let's go take some close-up shots, and I'll show you how nice they look, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about features. Pretty nice looking, huh? They're, um, this one's in pretty good shape. A uh, little, you know, scratch here and there, but overall, uh, very nice shape for a receiver of this age. But uh, as you can see, um, it, it's just got a, a very business-like, you know, very uh, thought out, you know, left to right uh, sort of design. Um, everything is, you know, here. It's got a feature for just about everything. So uh, very feature rich, I will say. So let's uh, sort of dig into it and talk through those. So uh, let's see. So again, on the um, years manufactured, this, these are from 78 and 79. Retail was $800. Now, starting off with the power, uh, right under the uh, SA-1000, but again, way under as far as power, but it did um, come in at 125 watts. So, you know, not insignificant. That'll pretty much run just about anything. You don't... Uh, you know, you don't really need that 330 watts uh, to, to run most speakers, but uh, this will pretty much run just about anything. So uh, at 125 watts, gets 20 points for that. On to uh, four ohm loads, which is always a big topic and very much supports four ohm loads. I mentioned that impedance matching circuitry. So it was uh, designed to, uh, you know, take a look at your speakers once you uh, hook connect them and turn it on and then um, set itself appropriately for that impedance. So um, handles four ohm loads for sure. Interestingly though, it's, um, it did show it's uh, still at 125 watts, by the way. And uh, gets, so it gets 30 points for that. Moving on into phonos. Has one phono and that's it. Um, I was kind of surprised. I, I kind of thought being at the, the upper end, it might have two um, and even possibly uh, some MC functions, but you know, capability, but it didn't. It didn't have either. So it has uh, one phono, and you know, for most people these days, that's that's fine. Um, but um, doesn't get any bonus points for the for the MC. But on the one phono, it gets uh, ten points for that. 
Additional sources, uh, you can hook up three more, um, has an auxiliary and then two uh, tape, tape inputs. So it gets 30 points for that. Now checked off just about every other box uh, after that. Has balance, five points. Volume muting, 10 points. Loudness, five points. Um, does have, um, it didn't have an on off mute um, tone controls. I was, that's the one thing it didn't have. But uh, mid, uh, bass, mid, and treble controls has all three, five points each. And uh, high low filters has that, 10 points. Then on into uh, sort of the bonus features has all of them. Um, has power meters. Now that's the one cool thing that differentiated them at the time were the, the LED site type of meters. So, you know, little departure set them apart from other manufacturers or most manufacturers from this particular time frame. They became a lot more popular in the 80s. So it has meters, has pre-out and amp in connectivity, so 20 points for that. And a wood cabinet. Now, it's not actually a real wood, I don't think. I think it's actually more of a, of a vinyl veneer, but still a wood cabinet nonetheless. So it gets 20 points for that. And then um, AC connections on the back has one switched, one unswitched, so 10 and five points each. And then lastly, uh, number of speaker connections. It handles two sets. So you can uh, have a in-room and remote set, as they like to call it on the switch. And uh, so for 20 points in total. So when you add everything up, it comes to 230 points. So pretty significant. That's uh, really right up there with the um, Pioneer SX 1010, uh, which is, you know, one of the biggest out there. So, um, you know, pretty substantial. Of course, this is many, a few years later. It's about five years later than the SX 1010, but uh, still had, um, you know, all of the uh, kitchen sink uh, thrown in here and all the features to go with it. Um, pretty much. So really um, uh, top end receiver as far as functions and, uh, and, and power to boot. So, um, you know, good stuff. Let me know, you know, what you guys, as I said, I haven't had that many of these, um, but uh, let me know what you guys experience, um, you know, with them. Uh, everything that I've had so far, I haven't had any that uh, didn't work. Um, as far as I can recall, none of them needed any um, fixing. I think everything came to life and was working with just cleaning the controls and so far so good. Um, so this one, uh, although I, um, as I mentioned, I got to get back in there and clean it again. Still working great. Um, once I get that scratching it, scratching this out, of course. But uh, anyway, you know, that's uh, that's it. Um, you run across these. Anybody has the uh, SA one thousand? Would love to hear your feedback on that, and uh, you know what you're running with it, etc. But um, all these, uh, this particular series, are pretty cool. I actually thought um, the earlier series just before this. Uh, to me, the design aesthetic seemed to be, um, to me, a little bit later even. But I thought I thought this series came before it, but uh, it actually didn't. But um, anyway, let me know your guys' feedback, uh, what your experience is with Technics. I think most of us um, have at one time or another had a Technics turntable because they pretty much dominated that segment with so many different models in every price point along the way. So most of us have had a Technics component at one time or another, but um, I don't think as many, near as many have had a receiver um, as much as a, a turntable. But I've had quite a few of the turntables. They made, I don't know how many models overall, but probably 50 or 60 more, at least um, over the years. But um, anyway, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. And if you want to keep up, hit that subscribe button. See you next time. So when you add everything up, it comes to 230 points. Uh, for the for the speakers. So when you add everything up, it uh, gets a score of 240 points.